Praise God. We don't have the foresight that he has, the foreknowledge that he has. Amen. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. It's good to be in your presence. Amen. We thank God for another opportunity <clears throat> to declare his word. Amen. So I, I thank God for being alive. Anybody just wake up every morning thanking God for being alive? Amen. Hallelujah. That means I got another opportunity to keep it right or to get it right. Whichever the case may be. Amen. So I'm just glad to be in the number. I was reflecting on the song. Every time I look around, somebody's gone. They used to be back in the 80s. Look around in the church, there's somebody gone. Look around in my home, somebody's gone. In the neighborhood, somebody's gone. So the fact that I'm still here tells me that God is watching over me. It could have been me, so I'm just glad to be alive. Amen. So uh, I got another opportunity to witness, got another opportunity to preach, got another opportunity to, to sow seed, got another opportunity to help somebody along the way. So I thank God this morning. Amen. So I honor God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for the Godhead. I thank God for our spiritual head in the earth, Archbishop Harris C. E. Clark and elect Lady Betty Clark. I thank God for my wife, Pastor Sitton. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I thank God for the elders of the house, Elder Dawson, Elder Burke. Amen. Praise be unto God. Thank God for the deacons, for Karen Ballinger. I thank God for Superintendent Brown and... Uh, <clears throat> DJ Brown, we call him. <laughs> Thank you for cutting grass and all of that. Amen. Praise be unto God. Amen. Had me cutting my grass yesterday. I didn't cut it all. <laughs> too much for me. Too high. Praise God. But I thank God for, for him cutting the grass. Something I used to do by myself. Amen. God has sent me some help. Praise God. Thank God for all of you. The praise team, amen. Did a beautiful job this morning. Amen. And we reached back and got an old tune. You don't understand my worship. You don't understand my praise. Because it's for real. Amen. You don't understand my story. Amen. It ties into what I'm going to preach about today. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for those that are watching by way of Facebook. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Each and every one of you assemble. We thank God for you. Amen. We want to invite your attention to 2 Corinthians 11, 16 through 33. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 11. It's really not proper to read the whole passage, but I want to start at verse 22 and read down. Then we'll come back and we'll pick up uh, the rest of it for you can understand where I'm going. <clears throat> Amen. If you would stand by signified, I'm reading from the New International Version. Verse 22 says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. <laughs> I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, and been exposed to death again and again. Five times. I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my own countrymen, in danger from Gentiles 
lives and dangers in the city and dangers in the country and dangers at sea and in dangers from false brothers. I have labored and toiled and have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concern for all the churches. Who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor under King Arturus has the city of the Damascenes guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket from a window in the wall and slipped through his hands. Amen. I want to talk through this topic. It's a good topic. It does not look like a blessing. You may have your seat. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do come now saying thank you and praise your name. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've done, all you're doing. Amen. We give you honor and praise and worship. We ask now that uh, you just take control, do what you want to do as long as you want to do it. Father, we give you free reign in this house. Lord, use me till you use me up, and you will be glorified in the earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. It does not look like a blessing. Paul, Paul was a strange person. You know that he was on the road to Damascus and to afflict the church. and He was arrested by Jesus. Jesus showed him all the things that he would suffer for the kingdom's sake. Amen. So as we get down into 2 Corinthians, he begins to talk about the many things that he had endured for the kingdom. Amen. But how many of you know that it was a blessing? It was a blessing because it blessed others. It let others know that if Paul could go through all of this, then what about me? Who am I that I can't suffer some for the kingdom? The Bible declares that if we suffer with him, Jesus suffered. If we suffered with him, we shall all together reign with him. Amen. So it, it don't always look like a blessing. Amen. Some things are, are, are veiled. They're, they're not meant to be revealed till later on. Amen. As you go through them and you come out on the other side, you'll find that there was a blessing intended for you. Amen, somebody. See, we want things easy, but uh, this walk is not easy because you got enemies out there. First of all, you got Satan as your enemy, and he's going to make certain that he makes it hard for you. He's going to make certain that things don't go well for you. Amen. But your response to how things are going is going to determine whether or not you come out of it. See, you got to understand that your attitude determines your altitude. You got to know that God is still on your side, even in the midst of the trials. Amen. He's leading you through the trials. Amen. He has purpose for you going through. What's the purpose, preacher? Because I'm tired of going through. The purpose is there's somebody coming along behind you that's looking at you to see how you deal with your issues. Amen. See, somebody need an example in the earth. Amen. Jesus came to be our example. How to suffer and how to be glorified. Paul picked it up and he suffered greatly, but Paul was glorified. Am I right about it? Yeah, yeah. He, he did more than any of the apostles that, the, that were the original apostles. Amen. God assigned him more. Because he assigned him more, he suffered more. Hallelujah. I don't know what Paul got when he got over there, but praise God, I believe it was great mm -hmm, for all the suffering that he went through down here in the earth trying to spread the gospel. He spread the gospel further than anybody, wrote more of the New Testament than anybody. 
Come on, somebody. So he was glorified. It didn't look like a blessing when he was going through. Sometimes you, you, you're on this Christian journey and you mean the Lord all the way. But baby, I'm telling you that somebody going to come up against you. And it don't look like a blessing. But it was meant for your good. Mm, somebody uh, has to get away from you. God moved people out of your way. People you thought would be with you forever and a day. Uh huh. But God knows their heart and, and he moves them, calls them to get dissatisfied with you. Amen. Just to move them out of your way. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, 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 can, you can boast about how God moved your enemy that you thought was a friend. Amen. And, and you realize he was a friend of me. Amen. And God moved him or her out of your life so that you can see the blessings of God in your life. Come on, somebody. Do I have a witness in the house? Have you ever had to lose anybody that you thought would be with you forever? Amen. A brother, a sister, maybe a family member. Amen. Hallelujah. They had to get out of your life. Mm, so Paul, Paul begins to talk about his suffering, how he suffered uh, in the kingdom. See, we don't ever want to talk about suffering. Nah, we, everything's got to be peaches and cream. Everything got to be a bed of roses. See, that's what we're running after now. We got big time preachers preaching uh, uh, all these sweet things to the people because they don't want to discourage the people. But I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm trying to encourage you that you're going to have some troubles and some trials in this life. But baby, you got some help. You got some help. Man, you better you better seek the truth. Amen. I don't 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 butter me up or sugar me up. Amen. Tell me the truth. Mm. Paul says in the 16th verse, Amen. I repeat, let no one take me for a fool. I'm not a fool. But if you do, then receive me just as you would a fool. <laughs> so that I may do a little boasting. <laughs> Paul, I, I just need to do a little boasting if you think I'm a fool, amen. In this self-confident boasting, I am not talking as the Lord would, but I'm talking as a fool right now. Mm-hmm, yeah. See, God don't want you boasting about certain things, but there are some things you ought to be boasting about. You ought to be boasting about how you went through and God brought you out. You ought to be boasting about, hallelujah, you were sick in your body and the doctor gave up on you and God brought you out. Come on, somebody. You ought to be boasting how you were broke and your bills were due. Didn't know how you are going to pay your bills, but God brought you out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you're not boasting as a fool. He says in verse 18, since many are boasting in the way the world does, I too will boast. Let, let me boast a little bit. I'm, a, I'm just going to boast a lot. I'm letting you know I'm going to boast just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You gladly put up with fools since you are so wise. <laughs> yeah, you think you wise. Amen. Any man like wisdom, let him ask for God. In fact, you even put up with anyone who enslaves you or exploits you or take advantage of you or pushes himself forward or slap you in the face. You put up with that. Paul says, to my shame, I admit that we were too weak for that. Mm -hmm. What anyone else dares to boast about, I'm speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast about. See, there's, there are times when uh, we put up more than what we should put up with. Mm -hmm. As Christians, we put up with stuff we shouldn't be putting up with. Amen, Paul said, but, but you put up with it and you boast about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I shouldn't be putting up with folk coming in the church wanting to rule the church. Amen. And tell the church what the church ought to be doing against the word of God. No, no, we ain't going to boast about it. We love everybody over here. Yeah, we love everybody, but everybody that comes through the door, hallelujah, that's not right. You to get right. Amen. Abide by the word of God or get gone. 
Amen, somebody. It's time for the church to stand up and boast about the word of God. And, uh, I had a song say, uh, I know my Bible is right. Somebody else is wrong. So if the Bible is right, I'm going to boast in the Bible. And I'm going to tell you what the Bible say. And if you don't want to accept what the Bible said, then get gone. Amen. It's time out for trying to fill up church with numbers. Praise God. And you got everything in your church. Uh, I, I'm boasting on the Lord. The Lord is not pleased with that. Get them right. If they don't want to get right, they need to get gone. Amen. Because they're just going to be a snare to you down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Paul began to boast. He says, are they Hebrews? Hmm, I am too. So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they Abraham's descendants? So am I. What they bragging about? I got the same thing. <laughs> Are they servants of Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. Amen. I'm serving them more than what they're serving. I've worked much harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been around the known world spreading the gospel. Mm, so I work harder than them. So if anybody going to brag about being a Hebrew or Israelite or Abraham descendant or servant of Christ, hey, I ought to be bragging. Amen. Been in prison more frequently. More than anybody. Been flogged more severely. They beat me crazy. And been exposed to death again and again. You remember when they stoned him and drug him out of the city is dead and the saints gathered around him and prayed and he popped up and went right back into the city. Woo! That's the God <laughs> that was with him. He began to talk about being uh, five times I received from the Jews for his lashes minus one. That's 39 stripes. Same stripes they put on Jesus. They beat Jesus one time. Beat him five times. Well, I can brag about that, that, I, that I've been beaten that many times, and I'm still here. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. This is what I've been going through. It don't look like a blessing. It looked like I'm cursed. Come on, somebody. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in dangers of rivers, in dangers of the bandits, dangers from my own countrymen, Whew. in danger from the Gentiles. I expect to be in danger from the Gentiles, but my own countrymen. Sometimes it's your family that you're in danger of. Mm -hmm. Those who say we are kindred. They don't like you. I've been in danger in the city. In danger in the country. Everywhere I go. In danger at sea. In danger from false brothers. People who say they love the Lord. And that means they ought to love me. But they were false brothers. Trying to get an enroll to see how they're going to do me in. Anybody had any false friends like that? Huh? Anybody had anybody who got close to you just to get into your business to see your weakness and spread your weakness all over? It don't look like a blessing. Mm-hmm. Paul said, I've labored and tall and have often gone without sleep. I'm known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I have been cold and naked. So anybody had any trouble? I've had more trouble. Mm -hmm. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressures of my concern for all the churches. I got I to gotta, I gotta look after all these churches that I'm planting. Make certain that they're up and running and doing well. And then I face all these dangers. Why? Because he was planting all these churches. 
Amen. And, and, and Satan didn't want him planting all them churches. It don't look like a blessing. Hmm. Look like I missed it. Well, I just should have stayed in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You ever been on an assignment and, and the people didn't receive you and your assignment? Uh, I've been there. Done that. Amen. It don't look like a blessing. But somehow or another, God brings a blessing your way uh, for completing your assignment. Mm -hmm. So he says, who is weak? <laughs> and I don't feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I don't inwardly burn. There are things in me I want to sin too. Amen. Sin has pleasure. Come on, somebody. Yeah, the flesh. God didn't do anything with the flesh. You got to do something with the flesh. Paul said, I buffet my flesh. I beat it up. <laughs> I deny it. Come on, somebody. I bring another subjection to my spirit. Why? Because I don't want to preach to others and find myself a castaway. Hmm. So I am with burn just like all of y'all. I know I don't have a wife. Hey, so I'm burning. But but listen, I know how to beat up my flesh and tell my flesh what it's not going to do. Flesh, we're not going to do this and we're not going to do that. It goes against the word of God. So he said, if I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. I'm not, not boasting on the things eh, that show how great I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How many of you running, Doc? I'm running 500, man. Praise God. I, uh, yeah, they pay me good over there. <laughs> no, 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 no. What about your weaknesses? Don't tell me you don't have any. The devil is a lie. <laughs> you got some weaknesses, and you may as well deal with them. In order to overcome them, you have to deal with them. Because if not, Satan will always show you what you're weak after. Uh-huh. Am I right about it? <laughs> uh, then he declares, he's swearing. Now he said, the God and Father of the Lord Jesus, who is to be praised forever, knows that I'm not lying. <laughs> God knows whether you're lying or not. The devil knows whether you're lying or not. And you know whether you're lying or not. Come on. So he said, listen, to God God knows I'm not lying. Now, I'm weak just like you're weak. But I've learned to control myself. I learned to overcome. Amen. There were times when they were seeking me to arrest me. Praise God. But they lowered me down in a basket. Somebody needs some help. Amen. You're going to always find when you're in dire straits, there is somebody that will come to your rescue. Amen. And listen, if I can't do nothing, if I can just be a rope holder and help the man and woman of God, amen, to escape the hand of the enemy. I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of the of the wicked. But if I can't do that, just let me lower the basket down the wall so you can escape. Hallelujah. Because you're an important man of God. And if that's all I can do, then that's what I do. Amen, somebody. Uh, do I have any rope holders in the house? Amen. That'll hold me up and let me down. Uh, that the enemy can't get to me. How are you going to rope hold in this day and time? In prayer, you hold me up. Amen. In prayer, you let me down. Amen. Safely, glory to God. When the enemy is after me, but prayer is holding him back. Amen. When it don't look like a blessing, it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. There are promises. He said, listen, I'm Abraham's seed. And if I'm Abraham's seed, then I am subject to the blessings of Abraham. So whatever I do in the kingdom is subject to receive the blessings of Abraham. Don't look like a blessing. Got to go through some stuff. Hallelujah. To get to some stuff that God has for you. God wants to know, will you hold on to the blessing come? Ah. Will you be faithful until the blessing come? 
Will you meet your obligations until the blessing comes? See, we want the blessing, but we don't want the suffering. God has said, will you suffer a little while for me? I need you to be an example to somebody else on this journey. Mm -hmm. He has promised us some blessings. Mm. And we are the seed of Abraham. Through Christ Jesus. Uh, that means, the, that, means that the, the blessing that, that was promised Abraham a promise to us. Uh, and we find them alienated down in, 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 in the Deuteronomy 28. Those are our blessings. People read them and they jump and shout, but they don't understand. That's your blessings. And you can claim your blessings. Amen. You don't have to say, oh, name it and claim it. It's already named. You just claim it. See, you're trying to claim something outside the blessings. Claim stuff within the blessings. Amen. And whatever you're going through that don't look like a blessing, the blessing is coming your way. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Deuteronomy 21 and 8. 28 and 1. <laughs> 28 and 1 says, if you fully obey the Lord, your God, and carefully, carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. Now notice what he said, fully obey, carefully follow all the commands. The Lord's going to put you above all the nations on earth. And then he says in verse 2, And all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. In other words, they're going to follow with you. They're going to walk with you. I think they even talk to you. Praise God. The blessings are overtaking you. They're coming upon you because you're a child of God. You're the seed of Abraham. Yes, I had to go through, but there's some blessings walking with me. There's some blessings following me. Amen. And whenever I'm in need, whoo, he said, I supply all your need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All my needs, all the blessings, they're going to come upon me, accompany me, if I obey the Lord my God. You will be blessed in the city, uh huh, blessed in the country. Wherever I am, I'm going to be blessed. Amen. Look like Paul was blessed, in, uh, not blessed, but cursed in the city and blessed in the country. Because everywhere he went, he was followed by folk. Amen. And they tried to destroy him in the city. They tried to destroy him in the country, but they couldn't do it. Why? Because he had some blessings following him. Whew. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said the fruit of your womb will be blessed. That's your children. And the crop of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herd, and the lambs of your flock. Amen. Everything pertaining to you will be blessed if you walk up right before your God. Amen. People are going to look at you, know you're going through, and they wonder when you're going to go under. They sitting back watching. They ain't talking about it. They making bets. I won't be long now. It won't be long now. Yeah, they going under. Amen. I knew they talk about Jesus all the time. Now, 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 how Jesus going to get them out of this? Amen. Uh, but he said, listen, everything pertaining to you going to be blessed. Hallelujah. Your baskets and your kneading trough will be blessed. Amen. And everything that you got stored up going to be blessed. Hey, I, come on, somebody. Yo, I put it this way. Let's modernize this thing. Your pocketbook and your bank account going to be blessed. Are you hearing me? Yeah, you never lack. Hallelujah. There'll be no lack for you. Praise God. Woo! He said, when you, when you come in, you'll be blessed. When you go out, you'll be blessed. Come on, somebody. Uh, the Lord will grant. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They're going to rise up, try to destroy you. But before you, they're going to be defeated and you don't have to raise a hand. 
Woo! And he said, they will come at you from one direction and flee from you in seven. They're going to scatter in seven directions, getting away from you because they understand that the blessings of the Lord <laughs> maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Are you hearing me? They understand, oh, Lord, we're going to mess up. Now we got to get out of here. They're going to flee as in terror seven ways. That's what flee means, run as in terror. Mm -hmm. Then it says, verse 8, the Lord will send a blessing on your bonds and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. They're trying to take your land, <laughs> but it's too blessed. Somebody say, too blessed to be stressed. When you understand your God, hallelujah, and you have to go through some things, hold on, baby. You coming out. Mm -hmm. Then it said, the Lord will establish you as his holy people as he promised you and on oath. If you keep the command of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. I like this next verse. Because people are looking at you, waiting on you to fail. They're waiting on Lord of Glory to fail. Amen. They wish it had fallen way back then, but it couldn't. Because God's blessings were following us. Amen. All Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. They tried to stop your progress. They decided they come up against you. They caused you to have some heartaches, some hard times. But after a while, <laughs> after you suffered a little while, <laughs> they're going to see that you were blessed and you're called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. You don't have to fear your enemies. Your enemies will fear you. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb. You have plenty of children. The young of your livestock and the crops of your ground. Mm -hmm. In the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. Where God established you, that's where he's going to bless you. Mm -hmm. I'm looking, hallelujah, for an increase in Lord of glory. I'm looking for an increase in souls. Come on, somebody. He established us here. Some people said we're in the wrong spot, but I say he established us here. We had to go through what we had to go through. Now the blessings are getting ready to come upon us. Hallelujah. Because we held on and we didn't let go of our faith. Don't let go of your faith. Your faith will see you through. Come on, somebody. Woo. I like this. I like this. He says in verse 12, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty. Woo. To send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. He's going to make you the lender and not the borrower. When you are borrowing, you're in bondage. <laughs> but when you're lending, you're increasing. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> People don't understand that. God wants you to be the lender and not the borrower. Mm, he don't want you in bondage to any man. Man, I think that's why he paid off this building so early. Didn't want me in bondage to anybody. Hallelujah. Freed me up from having to accept a, a, a little bit of crumbs from somebody who wanted the building. Ah, uh, I don't owe anybody anything. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Woo! Oh, they wished I owed. What's the, what's the song from uh, uh, Snow White in the Seven Dwarf? I owe, I owe, so off the work I go. Amen. I don't owe anybody anything for the building. Hmm. I'm boasting in the Lord. 
The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. <laughs> Too long we've been the tail. God said, I'm make you the head. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. I'm going to the top. Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, we're going to the top. Amen. That's the last time I'm going to tell you to look at your neighbor. Amen. Uh, we're going to the top. How did they get there? We believe the Lord our God. We believe that the blessings of the Lord make us rich and addeth no sorrow. Come on, somebody. I'm not looking uh, to be a borrower again. I'm not looking, praise God, to have to go with my hat in my hand to go to some bank and ask them for a loan to build a building. Come on, somebody. I'm not looking to go to ask anybody anything. I want to call the people in and say, this is what we want to do, uh, and this is how we're going to pay. My God, and we won't have to borrow a dime. That's my belief. God's going to do it. Hallelujah. And we're going to be the recipients of it. As a matter of fact, we are the recipients of it. And when it happens and it manifests in the earth, somebody. Go say, how they do that? How they do that? How they do that? When we paid off the building, how they do that? When we got the building, how they get that? See, they are always the naysayers who expecting you to go under, who when it happened for you, or guess what they believe, are wondering how they did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, all you have to do is keep believing. Oh, come on, somebody. So Abraham, there's an argument in Galatians, Paul writes about Abraham, Galatians 3, uh, 6 through 9. Mm, and I'm going to try to wind this thing up. Praise God. Give me just a few more moments. Amen. That's the first time I said that now. <laughs> I got two more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Elder say I got two more of them. <laughs> Paul says, consider Abraham. He believed God and it was credit to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who believe are children of Abraham. The scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announced the gospel in advance to Abraham, all nations will be blessed through you. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. The blessing that fell on Abraham should fall on us. Mm -hmm. We got to go through some stuff. Abraham had to go through some stuff. Amen in order to get the blessings and he went through a long time to get the promise of the promised child 25 years before he got the promised child and we can't wait two weeks we we can't wait two days if it didn't happen yesterday it's not gonna happen come on somebody the blessings are with you already they just had manifested the reason why they had manifested because you're not ready to receive them yet. Amen. But when you are ready to receive them, you go through what you have to go through to get to what you want to get to. The blessings will manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Because the curse has been broken. Ah. We're blessed with Abraham. Go down to verse 13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessings given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So that by faith, we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Amen. We went through, but and it don't look like we're blessed, but we are blessed. 
God is not going to have to go back to heaven to get the blessings and bring them to you. They're already following you. When you are ready to receive them, and, and listen, some people can't receive blessing because they'll forget about God. But when you've been through some stuff, <laughs> I say when you've been through some stuff, when you've been through some heartache, some hard pains, amen, some suffering down here, you, you'll appreciate the blessings when they come, and you'll keep the blessings. Are you hearing me? So God is allowing you to go through the fire. He's allowing you to pass through the waters on the other side of the fire, on the other side of the water. That's where the blessings are waiting on you. You will receive the promise of the Spirit. Amen. Woo. <laughs> oh. 2 Timothy 2, 12. I'm through. Amen. I'm through now. I'm through. Praise God. That's two. Second Timothy 2 and 12. King James Version says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Are you hearing me? Amen. I don't know about you, but he want me to reign with him. That's the biggest blessing. All this other stuff is ancillary. Money, land, houses, all that's ancillary. Why? Because it's going to burn up. <laughs> but to reign with him, to rule with him, yeah, that's the blessing. My, 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 my. To get my crown of righteousness, that's the blessing. To get my robe that's white, been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that's the blessing. To get my golden slippers, to walk on golden streets, that's the blessing. Come on, somebody. To live forever, that's the blessing. To be with him forever, that's the blessing. Everything he has, he's going to share it with me for the suffering I had to do down here. Come on, somebody. Yeah, people say the pie in the sky, there's some pie down here, but there's more pie over there. Hallelujah. I like the pie down here, but I'm looking for the pie over there. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but Jesus, hallelujah, went through suffering uh, for, the, for the glory that was set before him. Hallelujah. He saw the glory that he had with the Father before, and it was at his hand. All he had to do was suffer for a little while. So he suffered the shame of the cross. Come on, somebody. Naked on the cross. The shame of it all. Uh, they beat him all night long. Come on, somebody. Woo! They hung him on the cross. Pierced him in his side. Uh, yeah, they spat on him. Pulled out his beard. Uh, didn't look like a blessing. Woo! I say it didn't look like a blessing. They that looked upon him uh, did not desire him. Uh, he don't look like a blessing. Hanging there swollen. Uh, bruised. Hallelujah. Don't look like a blessing. Uh, they took him down and buried him in a borrowed tomb. Uh, all hope was gone. Uh, didn't look like a blessing. Uh, but somebody said early Sunday morning. Uh, before the rooster crowed, early Sunday morning, before the women got to the tomb, the angel was dispatched, the earthquake rolled the stone away, and he got up with all power in his hand. And now that he lived, I can live. Hallelujah. That's the blessing. I can live now. Before I was just existing. But now I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now I'm living this life to live again. Are you hearing me? It didn't look like a blessing. When he called me from prosperity down to poverty to start a work for him. Left all that money. Didn't look like a blessing. Everybody looked at me. Said I was crazy. But didn't look like a blessing. But oh, look at it now. It was a blessing in disguise. Folk couldn't come 
because they were looking in the natural. But those who were looking in the spirit uh, saw the blessing. They caught the vision. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go higher. Higher. Anybody want to go higher? In the Lord. We're getting ready to escape the snare of the enemy. And go higher. Didn't look like a blessing. But it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going higher in Jesus. Woo! I shall reign with him. Everything he has, he's going to share it with me. He's going to share it with you. And all those that held on and held out to the end, but it takes no pleasure. And those who draw back and go back, I say he takes no pleasure in them. By God, by God, he has a blessing for you. And the blessings make it rich. And that is no sorrow. People running after riches and when they get it, they're miserable. They got those hanger-ons. People get married because they think they're going to, uh, you know, get some of their blessing. <clears throat> and then they divorce them and now they got to split their wealth with them. When, when they came, they didn't have nothing. But they leave with your blessing. Amen, somebody. There are rich folk committing suicide too. But baby, when, when God bless you, you know how to be blessed. Secondly, you know how to be a blessing. My Lord, my Lord. Whew. You know you can't hoard it all up for yourself. But God put seed in your hand. And as you sow seed, he multiplied the seed that's sown back to you. Amen. You'll always have a sufficient supply to supply every good need, every good cause that come along. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. Amen. You ain't got to tell everybody how rich you are. You're not going to make the Forbes 100 or Fortune 400, whatever it is. You know, you're not going to be up there with Oprah and Michael Jordan and uh, Elon Musk. And, no, that, that, that's not what that's about. How much do they sow into the kingdom? There's enough money in America to, to have every, every pastor church, a nice church. But we suffer because it's hoarded up. God put that in the earth for his children. So I'm going to claim mine. If you don't want yours, I claim yours too. Are you hearing me? I ain't talking about naming and claiming. No, I'm talking about it's in the word. I'm going to claim what's in the word. Hallelujah. I'm going to bless everything that pertains to me. And if the enemy comes in and try to steal, whew, I caught you. Seven. Seven folk. Give it back. I can demand that. So I'm going to stand on the word of God. Preachers don't stand on the word of God. Stop depending on numbers. I heard a man say, I got 20,000 people in my church. I only have 500 disciples. 
Ain't that something? Twenty thousand people, but I got five hundred that I can call disciples. I'm looking for disciples. Those who are teachable and can take the teaching and activate the teaching. Amen. Give me 500 disciples any day. Y'all can have the 10, 20, 30,000, 50,000 people. Yeah, they put a lot of money in because of the large numbers. I had a conversation with a former member. And he was talking about he went to this church. They took up $10,000. They had 1,000 members. I looked at him and said, let's, let's break that down. You got 1,000 people. You took up $10,000. That's $10 per person. I told him, I said, we just got, I forgot what we had at that time. But my, my ratio is $60 per person. So I take the $60 any day. Because when I get to 1000 and we're still doing $60 per person, he said, well, I never thought about it like that. I said, well, think about it like that. People are just putting in money, and it's large because you got a large congregation. But how many are really paying tithes? <laughs> See, but they're trying to get rich. I'm through. Praise God. Stand to your feet. Decisions. 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 This is the time and the hour of decision. Who will accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior? 